being with the Ron and Fez show tonight on a Thursday. And on August 12th, that's a Thursday night, we will be broadcasting live from Dave & Buster's at the White Flint Mall in Bethesda, Maryland. Looking for some billiard players. If you shoot a little stick, give us a call. We'll uh, take your call off the air at 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. Or just uh, email us at Ron and Fez at AOL dot com, Ron and Fez at AOL dot com. For that pool party, Fez, giving away a cool trip. That's right, a trip anywhere Independence Air flies. We'll hook you up with airfare for two from Independence Air. Uh, Fez, I went and saw that Will Smith movie today, and I said how much I disagreed with you. And somebody uh, wrote in that they liked the movie, and they said the. The CGI was great. Or, you know what? Here's the two things I know that I do not want to ever take as a movie recommendation. Great computer graphics, great action. When Ellen goes, well, the action was good, that's not a film for me. I never bought into that film for even a second. Never bought in that he was actually living in the future. Never bought in that Chicago was supposed to look that way 30 years from now. Never bought in that somehow these things would go to homes instead of the military. You would think the first thing that would happen is that the military would be all over this. Never bought into th that chick. I don't know who she was, but doing the big overacting faces through the whole thing. Just never grabbed me for a second as being a real film. I like some sci-fi. I said Blade Runner was uh, a film I really liked, but I can't keep watching the same movie every single summer that's built over some effects that I'm supposed to care about. Well, with the Lord of the Rings movies, people would always say, oh, great battle scenes. That was always the big compliment coming from those things. But you have to believe in the movie itself. You have to kind of transport yourself, or as they say, drop your disbelief so you can believe the illusion that's going on around you. And if I don't get to that point, I don't care how much they spent for the computer graphics. I'm not buying into it at all. I think I enjoyed it all the more because I saw it with Dr. Patty, and I think that's what helped me jump into the film and just dive into the story so I didn't have to sit there and have conversation with her. So if I really wanted to enjoy this film, I should go with Stalker Patty. I would like to make it through one show where you're not talking about Stalker Patty. Also, uh, I like that even though Will Smith did his standard opening scene that he likes to do in a movie where he's so under the pressure of his big gigantic muscles that he has to strain to get out of bed. Remember how thin he used to be? Oh, yeah, those Fresh Prince days. Yeah, I mean, he was really, really skinny. And now his whole thing is being Sylvester Stallone. I, I guess... They need you to look like that if you're to be in an action film. I guess you really have to bulk up for it. But, you know, I mean, there was no reason for him to be big like that. There was, I didn't see where it was needed. And the whole product placement in that with Converse, there was no reason for Converse to have the third lead in the movie. I just, I didn't even slightly get it. And I think I'm going to have a bitch with Paul over, over this one, too. Because I don't know if he gave it as good a review as you did. You said to me that it was uh, the movie The Summer, which it may be, come to think of it. It's been such an awful summer. But uh, I think Paulo, he never really says that something's bad. Yeah, he'll... There's something in it for everyone. Yeah, and it's like, well, he's someone who will throw out, you know, great action. Yeah. All right, 866-277-4969. Here uh, is John. John, you're on the Ron Fest Show. How are you, buddy? Hello? Yeah, what can we do for you, yeah, John? Hey, you guys are great. Yeah. Uh, I was still going back to the beer thing. You can uh, do anything you want. Uh, <laughs> they, in uh, in Germany, my wife's German, too, and uh, she stopped drinking beer in the States because all she does is go to the bathroom and she compla complains about it. She's not even getting a buzz from it here. So you're saying the German beer is better, but we have a lot of imports here. It's not like you have to no, drink they're American different. beer. They're different. They get pasteurized and homogenized, and they don't even taste the same anymore. Well, this is shocking to me. I had no idea. No, so if you're getting absolutely. a Heineken, it's not the same Heineken that you are getting in German? Heineken is well, not... All right, let's say whatever, German, low and brown. No, it's, it's not the same beer. Over there. That's like a tourist beer. What, a hacker, what about a Hacker Shore? A Hacker Shore is great over there. 
Uh, I, I right, that's a really point. strong beer here. But I, here's what I'm trying to point out: Does it, it's not the same product here as you're getting over there? No, absolutely not. You don't go to the bathroom that much. <clears throat> you uh, and you get a really good buzz that that lasts, and you don't get the headache from all the chemicals and stuff like that. I, I had no idea of this. You know about it, Dubs? It, it's even different from uh, here to Canada. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, the beer's stronger over there. There's uh, they're totally different. Uh, e even if it's the same, you know, it, brand beer, even and a, a the bottle Budweiser, match. Even yeah. a Budweiser is completely different. You yeah. uh, you look at the label and it has completely different things on it, except for the label. Exactly. Well, what's the big uh, Toronto Blue Jays beer? Uh, that is the uh, Labatt's Blue. Yeah, Labatt's. So that if you get a Labatt's in Canada, not the same as getting a Labatt's here. It's night and day. I had no yeah. idea of that. When yeah. I, when I but I haven't drank in a while. When I got back fresh uh, from drinking all the German beer, I used to watch all my American friends uh, get totally plastered, and I would just go to the bathroom. And uh, in, in Germany, I would, even at the um, Oktoberfest, we would go there at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we'd drink all day all the way till midnight, and you had a good even buzz the whole time. You got pretty plastered, but you would... You you wouldn't get the headache. So what's wrong with American beer? Well, I mean, I what is know. wrong it's with the beer that we get here? Something, but it goes right to your bladder. I I just drink wine here now for the for the buzz and the taste and everything. But uh, in Germany, you'll drink a beer and enjoy it for lunch or whatever. And uh, probably at night, you, when you go out, you're with your buddies. You're just going to go get plastered and everything. That's why I think that. Uh, that thing isn't true either, because I think most Germans drink to get the buzz. Yeah, I think so, too. I think if you're going to be honest, you drink to get the buzz. There's no reason to drink it. Uh, I can maybe even understand wine, because that is something that, you know, like a cigar, it's aged and all those kind of things, and people can sit around and act like it's part of the food itself. But if you're drinking alcohol, if you're drinking beers, if you're having cocktails, I honestly think if you're going to be uh, honest, you're drinking to get buzzed. Uh, here's Jake. Jake, you're on the Ron Fez show. If you're drinking 40s, you're drinking to get buzzed. But uh, something you might not know about American beers versus imports, yeah. all American beers are required by law to have a single drop of formaldehyde in them for preservation purposes. Well, that sounds delicious. So you have to have a little drop of formaldehyde, and that way it doesn't spoil? That's uh, part of the reason. I, I heard it from a friend. I'm not sure how true it is, but uh, I was reading something about it on another or another, so you might want to look into it. So in Europe or Canada, you could have people actually getting poisoned from bad beers? Um, you know, it's probably possible. I'm sure if you're that bad of an alcoholic, it could happen. All right, thank you very much. 866-277-4969. Here is Sean. Sean, you're on Fez. Yeah, I just want to say something about that Joker. Talk about German beer is better. Yeah. And American beer gives him a headache. It sounds to me like he's a little girly man. You know what it sounds like? That he's try he's on the side of the terrorists, Sean. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Don't let him win. Would you expect to see Bill O'Reilly or Rush Limbaugh? With What's no, that? I expect to see Al Franken, maybe Michael Moore saying great things about German beer. The best beer in the world is right here. It's Budweiser. Now they got the big merger where it's going to be Molson Coors Brewing Company. With Coors going across the border and teaming up with Molson. You know, um, I don't like the idea of that, fellas. I don't like the international beers. Pick a country for yourself. So, and it's, somebody want to end up seeing the, the Montreal, uh, Denver Rockies where they play half games in each place. But that's really just about money, right? They're going to keep their breweries in the same place? Yeah, that's just about to, uh, you know, to gang up on a Budweiser and uh, yeah, a Miller. Here is, um, let's go to Arnie here. Arnie, you're on, you're going to have to take your thumb off there. Take your thumb off in the other room. Arnie, you're on there. How you doing, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Cool. Um, I was just commenting about the, the, uh, to talk about the beers and the, the guy who was just on, I mean, he's, He's right that you know the in the Germany the the beers you drink are certainly stronger, but the kind of beers I mean, they, don't, they don't drink what we call an import. I mean, you know the things like Heineken or that. He's right. That's water to him. He's just picking the wrong kind of imports. You can get like very good German beers or or Belgian beers or whichever that come. But, but you're getting the real beer that comes from there. You're not getting the American beer right. with the label on it. 
That's right. You're getting the real deer. Because that's the way he, he was describing it. That there was an American version and a European version of the same beers. Yeah. Now, I know, like, one of the differences that Dubs is talking about is because we want much less alcohol in our beers, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the big difference. If you go over to Canada and have a beer. Now, if you went to Canada, yeah. how many beers would you have? Three, four? Do oh, you yeah. feel like a six-pack? Yeah, definitely. Easy. How's the taste? It's uh, not much different. Not much different. No, it may, might be a, it tastes a little heavier or thicker, but it's basically the same beer. Now, I think like on July 1st, well, you know when all the new uh, laws go into effect in different states? I think Georgia up their uh, law about the percentage of alcohol you could have in beer. And I thought that that was kind of like a nationwide thing where it's, uh, you know, just a federal standard of no beer can have more than this percentage. I had no idea of that either. Utah is a big place where they, they water it down real bad. They water down everything but jello. They want the jello as pure as they can possibly get it. They like that thick. Yeah. All right, let me see. Here is uh, Ryan. Ryan, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm on a cell phone, so I may lose you, but uh, I go to Europe quite often, and uh, they have something in Germany called the Rheinheitsgebot, which is the German beer purity law, which dates back to the year 1516. Basically, it says they can't put anything in beer, and it, it outlines what they can put in beer, what they cannot put in beer. And as such, the beer over there is a lot pure, and as a result of the fermentation process, it's a lot stronger. All right, uh, now, but, what, what are the impurities that we're putting in, and why would we do it over here? Well, I agree with the previous caller. I have heard that uh, formaldehyde is one of the, the big preservatives that they put in the beer here, and that's what ends up giving you the headache the next day. It's the same thing with wine, wine that that is imported to the U.S. or made in the U.S. has to have sulfides in it. And the sulfides are what give you the horrible hangover the next day. Uh, and you know what, for me, there's nothing worse than, like, you drink a bottle of wine, next day I feel awful. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, going to the, the south of France and, you know, Bordeaux and the Armagnac region, you the wines that you get there that are actually made to be sold in the south of France are incredible wines. The, the taste is completely different. And, you know, I was over there on a business trip recently in which the vendor that we were over there meeting with was serving us wine all day long throughout these different meetings. And, yeah, you had a good buzz going, but you never got completely plastered. Right. And That's very interesting. Day, uh, people are saying the same thing over and yeah. over. Yeah, and the well, next day you felt good? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the next day we were ready for our champagne with breakfast. I mean, you know, it's it's just completely different. It's it's all a direct result of the preservatives that, that our government makes them put into the product. You know, the sulfides with the wine and, you know, like I said, I have heard that the formaldehyde is what they put in the beer to, to preserve it. But I don't know that for a fact. Thank you very much, my friend. Here is uh, Darren. Darren, you're around a Fez. Hey, guys, you know, I have a little problem that uh, I'm sure some of the listeners can share this as well. Um, when I go out, I like to party, and my friends just got tired of me being the most drunk one at the party. So right. they told me, they were like, they were like, Darren, you, you got to limit yourself to one drink. And so, you know, I thought about it. Drinking to get drunk, all that is is just really pounding your, your drink and then filling the cup up again and pounding it, you know, and filling it up again. Right. So what I decided to do was, you know, when uh, when I go to a party, I just get my 64 ounce uh, sheets fizzinator cup or my big 7-Eleven, um, you know, big gulp, and I just I put a few ice cubes in the bottom, fill it three quarters full of uh, either vodka or bourbon, and top it off with a with a nice little soda, and you know I just I, I have one drink that's my one drink for the night, right? And it, you know it just makes me feel good, and that way I can really honestly put myself in that remaining 83 percent. There you, you know? go. Thank you very much because that's basically what I think a lot of people that do the lying to yourself. Here's a guy who goes, all right, you want me to lie? and say I'm going to have this one drink, I will just have one drink at night, it's going to be 64 ounces. <laughs> there you go. The ice is getting added to it through the night. There is an honest man. Thank you very much. Uh, Fezzi, here's our uh, intern that was too drunk to actually stay with us. I think he's coming back in uh, September. Benicio, Benicio, you're on the Ron and Fez show. How are you? Benicio. Yeah, how are you? What, what can we do for you, buddy? All right, what's up, Ron? How you guys doing? Good. What can we do for you tonight? I got home. I heard you guys talking about beer and getting 
getting lit. Yeah. Well, I was actually home for a while, but yeah, I just turned the radio on because I've had a few myself. Today. You have a few every time you were drunk the first time you came in to intern for us. You were drunk during your finals at school. <laughs> then I guess you were drunk when you signed the papers because you couldn't be an intern for us until September, and yet you worked like two weeks with us. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you could kind of blame some of that toward maybe some uh, stopping off at the bar beforehand. Why are you drunk every night? <clears throat> well, I got nothing else to do now. So, I mean, you know, I just sit home. Yeah, uh, yeah because every reason you gave us for drinking was because you were nervous about a school situation or an internship situation. You were nervous about meeting us, so you went to the bar before your first night here. And you came in here and you're a mess. So you're still doing it? What are you nervous about now? Birds attacking you? I just got real bored. No, that bird, I tell you, that bird had coming to him now. But no, I just, you know, I was just real bored. And, you know, there's nobody I can find anybody. Why don't you date? Yeah, I know. You know, I tried. Maybe that's the problem. How long has it been since you've been with a girl? Yeah, it's been like uh, two years. Maybe if you weren't such a sloppy drunk, you'd do okay for yourself. You're not a bad-looking kid. I don't know. Let man. me check with Dubs. Dubs, if you were a chick, would you go out with Benicio? In a second. All right, there you go. You could have Dubs. You clean up a little bit. I don't know. You think that's really the problem? Because I always thought that helped me out. I always thought the more that I drink, and definitely right. the more that the girl drinks. All right, let, you haven't been with a woman in two years. How could drinking be helping you? Well, I, don't know. I always feel more confident. And your sloppiness is just contagious. You get sloppy drunk, and then you dress sloppy. You don't shave the neck. It just goes from there. <laughs> yeah, well, you I always shave dress neck. like that, even when I'm sober, though. All right. Well, are you going to sit and drink and listen to the show tonight? Yeah, definitely. All right, every once in a while, I just want you to pick up uh, your speaker and give it a hug and think of your buddies, all right? And we'll I see know. you when. When are you coming back, September? No, I think it's like August. All right, August. Okay, <laughs> see you later, Benicio. We'll see you for the fall semester. September. Just a mess. Just a mess of this kid. Uh, Dave, Dave, you're on a Fez. Hey, Dave. Dave! Yeah. Yeah, man, what's going on, guys? What, are you on a speakerphone? Uh, no, I'm on a damn cell phone. Yeah, it's not working too well. What can we do for you, buddy? I just, uh, I, I told her that, uh, I'm a uh, Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, your phone's not working at all. You know, you guys in there, if you're going to do phone screening, the person has to have a good phone. That's part of the whole deal. They just asked if they have one at all. Are you calling on a phone? Hold on, we'll uh, put you right through. That's the screening process. Sarah, you're on a fuzz. Hello? Yeah, how, can, how are you, honey? Excuse me. Yeah. First of all, I would like to say I am so very happy that I can hear you guys up in Baltimore now. Thank you very much. I don't... Not when I'm driving on the road. Okay. Okay. So you guys are the grooviest. Thank you. Okay. We're going to shake our groove things for you tonight. Well, thank you. I could certainly use that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm i a young lady who uh, I, I happen to drink on the occasion myself. And you had a few tonight? Yes. Actually, I have. How many? What's the occasion? Um, I, my boyfriend of two years, I haven't spoken to him in a week and a half. For good. He, you're too good for him. Well, thank you. He's an idiot. But well, she did our intern. And you're beautiful. I am, actually. You sound it. I am. Uh-huh. I, I really am. I, I mean, not, I'm, I'm, I mean, What do you look like? What Those do I look like? Yeah. Okay. I have long, brown, curly hair down below my butt. Oh, is that where it starts? <laughs> yeah. um, that's disgusting. No, that's a tail, case, honey. I when wish. you think about it, that's a tail. That would be really interesting. Now, yeah. I just have really long hair, and I'm a petite little Italian lady. Uh huh. I um I've I'm been complimented by many people. Mm -hmm. You know, of I, note. Excuse me. Go ahead. Baby not just down. like crackheads, but you know. Right, not crackheads. Just, of course not. You know. Like fezgets. <laughs> no. On my crack. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you have a lovely crack. I don't know, but <laughs> anyway, no. Mm, that I was um... uncomfortable. <laughs> that was really uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make. So, it... what's your point, Sarah? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Got off on a tangent. That's all right. Okay. One. I would like to say, from my own life and from people I've known, that people, especially around here, drink for a few reasons. Mm -hmm. One is because they are an addict and 
that is the substance that they wish, wish to use. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And... Theory and, two. Yeah. Okay. And... <clears throat> Other people just drink because it is socially acceptable. Is this a report that you're doing for health class? No. Okay. This is the way my brain works. Okay. And what else? Okay. And then other people drink to help alleviate problems that they have or, or any stress. Sarah? Yes. Nasty you can't mouth? curse when you're on the radio. I, know. I have never called the radio before, and uh -huh. I totally forgot. Yeah. I'm sorry. I understand. No, I am really cute. You sound it. Did the radio ring when you called it? <laughs> no, the radio didn't ring, but the phone rang when I dialed the number. Okay. Yeah. All right, honey. Well, uh, best of luck. Good luck. You. Uh, you dumped the boyfriend now. You're looking for somebody new. No, not quite. I love him very much. You, what was the fight about? Um, well, he he's basically an addict, and he... he What's his drug of choice? Alcohol. Uh-huh. Anything else? Um, well, in the past, like a long time ago, he's probably dabbled with a little bit of everything. A little bit of coke? Yeah. A little coke. bit of that crystal meth? Yeah. Meth head. So he's a meth head? No, he, he, I mean, he's doing oh. everything. Like, an addict in the true form will do anything that's put in front of him because right. it's, it's there. But his, his, his drug of choice is actually alcohol. But he had been in the, in the NA program for a couple of years, and he'd been. Well, it sounds like you've been there to help him. Well, yeah, I have. Yeah. Well, I I help any. By drinking any it all first, because you you know what? Um, if you come home from an NA meeting, you want your chick in this state. <laughs> Excuse me. Baking powder. Baking I think. Powder. Yeah. My refrigerator. I think you're delightful. Now the big fight was him getting high again. Well, no, he said he he needed to. He kind of fell off the wagon, and he needed to do his thing, and needed. I just, to I, I'm, Sarah, just talking to you makes me want to fall off the wagon. Oh. I feel like I got to go out and get angel dust just to relax a little bit. Why I, do you say that? I think you get caught under the wheels of a wagon. Me? No, you're terrific. No, you're we're too. Many people have noticed. We're, we're talking about a different girl. You're sweet. Well, I am. I'm a yeah. very loving, caring person. So you guys had a big blowout over him using again. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just kind of, you know, doing my thing, and, you know, I work in, with a lot of animal rescue groups in Baltimore City and uh -huh. and Were you saving sounds... tequila worms? <laughs> no, I don't drink tequila, sweetheart. Bez, please, sweetheart, stop it. I, uh, I can't, you know, I think you were just adorable until you've insulted me. No, we love you. That's, that's, uh... Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going send... to send, send you into the big-ass prize closet, Okay. Okay. We're going to give you something nice. You better. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send now, you guys a picture of something nice. All right. Now she is mad at are, me. Are you online? Can you send us a picture online? No, I'm anti-internet. Sorry. No. No. No, right. yes, I am. I fight the revolution. Sorry. All right. All right. Well, you they been... call me a little hippie. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because no hippies are on the internet. Well, I, I don't know. I don't go on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, no. I see them at festivals and right. Like, You'd have um, to find campfire. the arm button. Huh? Okay, hold on. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, boys. Gonna... Have a lovely evening. You too. You all hold right. on. Because I'm starting to see why your, you know, your preferences are different. She started to turn me. She started to turn me. Who? Cute Sarah? Yeah, she did sound cute though. <laughs> the hair down below her butt is what really had me thinking about her quite a bit. And it's nice and curly, she said. Mm. Mm. She's the total package. She, he, that, that boyfriend would be a fool not to get her back. Uh, this guy's just sitting somewhere with a spike in his arm going, make it go away. Make it go away. If I was him, every time I woke up from overdosing, I would scream, oh, God, why? Why send me back to her? Her face just appears on every bottle he tries to pick up. <laughs> I'd be making calls at 3 o'clock in the morning in Spanish Johnny. I'd take her one and just stuff it in my ears. I hey, back from your meaty. I kind of dug her, though. I don't know what it was. I kind of dug her. Well, a lot of people uh, have have I, commented on how no, cute. All I have to hear is the word petite, and I'm in. It's another junky thing. All right, we're going to take a break, Fez. I'll be back in just a few moments, and uh, we'll pick it up. It's the Ron and Fez Show.